if we have an exciting conversation, uh, it is about reimagining and, and looking at L&D from a different perspective. Um, and, you know, we will talk a lot about, and I'm sure it's happened in earlier discussions also, uh, something that's been more relevant in the last two years has been change. And, uh, you know, the, the saying that change is the only constant uh, is probably been right, especially for the L&D industry. Uh, all industries have gone through several amount of changes in terms of how do we approach L&D. And it continues to do so as we move along. I think every day, uh, you know, we're dealing with a new innovation, new way of kind of reaching out to our learners. So today's discussion, we will talk about, especially for our frontline staff and our learners, how life has changed in the retail industry uh, with our panelists. And they all come from very uh, different views. And we had a very interesting discussion couple of days back also. So I think it's going to be a fun conversation. I'll start off with my first question. And, uh, you know, we'll start with Neeti. Uh, what do you think is changing in the retail industry when it comes to learning, uh, especially in last two years? And how, you know, how is it that uh, retail industry is getting affected by it? Uh, Neeti, over to you. Thank you, Prachi. Uh, it's a pleasure being a part of this uh, panel um, on this event. Um, yeah, uh, you have uh, really raised a very interesting question. I would say if we kind of really close the window to the past two years, um, there were a lot of uh, macro uh, elements which uh, really impacted uh, learning and development given the pandemic uh, that uh, we all have seen and are uh, seeing, uh, continue to see, being seen. So yes, of course, uh, from a learning and development point of view, I think um, the, 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 the macro um, situation was really a kind of a, um, you know, a jolt to the learning and development world, uh, because we were used to uh, delivering eight hours, uh, seven hours of uh, trainings in person, in classroom, uh, and the kind of experiences that we were really creating for our learners uh, were pretty much um, uh, you know, coming from, from the format that we were using for delivery. But yes, in the past two years, uh, I think uh, the learning and development world has also learned to really uh, engage with the teams uh, remotely and not really in person. But that aside, I would say um, that's, that's just uh, probably a temporary phase. And I really hope that uh, we come back to our good old uh, classroom and in-person days. But that aside, I would say that uh, a lot has changed in, in past 10 years or 12 years that I have been associated with learning and development in the, in the retail industry. Um, the learners have changed drastically. I mean, when I started my career as, an, uh, as a retail operations manager, uh, and when I was undergoing certain product trainings or doing certain product trainings, it was really very different how we were doing it. But it has drastically changed in the past, uh, I would say, almost four to five years. Uh, the learners have had changed, and that is what really has, uh, you know, impacted how we are doing what we are doing. So now it's now about how the learner wants to learn. So if I am a learner, how I want to learn, when I want to learn, and what I want to learn. So I wouldn't say that it's now on me as an LNT. Uh, lead of my organization where I really set up a course module, a calendar and just deliver it, um, you know, to my to my audience. No, because now my audience has changed. They want to really know what they want to know. So how they learn. I mean, we could really get into details of it. They, they are not just um, looking at facilitation, let's, uh, you know, sessions. They want self-reads, they want to go the digital way, they want um, a blended learning approach rather than just a theoretical delivery approach. So if I learn uh, something about the sales equation today, do I get an opportunity to go back to my store and really start practicing on the floor? Because that's how I really want to learn. If I'm doing that, I would maybe want to be sharing my learnings and my experiences with my peer group. So the peer impact is larger than a trainer's impact in today's world, right? So I want to kind of validate my experiences with my peer group and really ask them, okay, did I do right or did I uh, miss anything? So that's how I want to learn. When I want to learn, as per my convenience, you can't really bind me into a nine to six session or a nine to five session. Um, I want it at a click of button. I want it uh, as per when 
I want to spare time and invest time into my learning and what I want to learn. So it's not that I think that my retail associate today needs to have product demonstration skills. No, probably my retail associate today wants to know how this product really um, satisfies the need of the consumer, the need which is now larger than what it used to be 10 years ago. So for example, if I was the consumer, I would walk into the store and say, I need this and could you help me, et cetera, et cetera. No, now I want to go as a consumer. I want to see how sustainable the product is, right? Is it gender neutral? Or are we still kind of really slicing it into, into uh, the gender fashion? So, so that's the kind of consumer who's walking into the store. So then as a retail associate, I would want to know how does this product really uh, fit into the value systems of the consumer? So, so I would say a lot has changed and I would say changed for good. Uh, that doesn't really, uh, you know, kind of really put me uh, in a corner and uh, make me really, uh, you know, uh, shake my mind up and say, okay, now how do I go about this? Because I see that, I see that curiosity, I see that um, uh, that intention, and I see that effort uh, in today's world where this generation really wants to learn. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And, and, you know, it's it's absolutely right. Uh, I think we've moved from seven, eight hours of classroom session as much as they were fun. Uh, but I think it's become a digital first approach. It is a very pull based learning. You know, what is it that I want to learn? And I think L&D world is still adjusting to that uh, because this was a sudden change from a seven to eight hours classroom download product session to suddenly you know, very, very learner central. And, and I absolutely, I, I completely agree with you. And it's an exciting change. Um, and I think we'll talk about how to deal with it while it's exciting. Sometimes dealing with it is, is just another ball game. Uh, I'll move on to Dhruv and ask him a similar question or as to, you know, what are the changes that you see in the retail industry? And uh, are you excited to get back to seven to eight hours of classroom session? Dhruv, over to you. Uh, Dhruv, I think you're on mute. Hi, thank you. Thanks for your time. I will pick up from uh, Niti where she kind of said a learner has himself changed. And that's so true. So starting from retail. So I guess retail is going through a massive change. It has gone through a tremendous change in the last two years, uh, right from the buying process, right from the customer preferences, the way they buy, what they buy, how they buy, all has changed. And that has put tremendous pressure on all the companies <clears throat> to realign their business models, realign their talent, realign their learning and development. So I will spend more time in terms of the macro change that I am seeing. And what I feel is that the knowledge available uh, suddenly has multiplied. So suppose I was making a training content earlier. I would have limited myself to say one stream of knowledge and you know I'm focusing on that. Now what I'm witnessing is that we have to pick up the content from various industries, various areas of various subjects and then that's how we have to go and build a good content. The content range has increased on one side. So if I have to like, train people on customer service, maybe I have to draw out not only from the retail customers, but I have to go now and say, how's the uh, e-commerce uh, uh, buying pattern of a customer? Then I will see, okay, how the young generation buying? Then I have to see how the women... So what's happening is that we have to study many more subjects right now to make it cohesive, relevant content for the business. And the other thing that I'm seeing is that the number of things that we have to train people on has also increased. You know, if we were doing, say, one training earlier for one set of people, I suddenly believe it has multiplied into three. We have to do three more trainings and maybe every training is getting changed every month. Same manager you go to and, you know, talk to them and ask them, OK, you know, what's what's uh, we did something uh, two, three months back. How's the impact going? And, you know, uh, then you say, no, 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 what is happening is, you know, I need two more things. Uh, because uh, these two things have come in, I've got added some new products, my the, the customer has changed and you know they are doing this more and I need to have something little more. Now, so the rate of content creation, 
is changing as multiplied and then the content itself has to be a lot more integrated across the subjects and then all the niti said was you know uh, uh, how to make it individualistic how to kind of customize uh, how, when to make it available how they will consume is also there so that's the change that i see uh, on the learner side and the way training is moving that's that's pretty interesting and uh, you know dhruv that kind of uh, tickles my mind with a question do you think eventually with content we will have a problem of plenty you know like we will have we already we are having Yeah. it's like people are so getting used to going through one content after another and that's what the videos are actually doing to us all the content is there on netflix or youtube and all people are you know uh, in one sense they are getting avid consumers of content so the rate of adoption is fast now so that's not a challenge now to like to make people to come to the platform make them consume something i don't think that's a bigger challenge but to make it specific to people let them know when to stop and you know how to utilize it i believe that's where our role will come in yeah and 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 a very very interesting topic uh, you've picked up which is content it's probably one of my favorites and i keep telling everybody that it's it the the boredom period has become so short right because look at instagram you just go and that's it but somehow you can't create content that short and and i think our content creators are are going to extend their imagination and be more creative that's a very interesting one dhruv thank you for bringing that up uh manvi over to you uh listening to a lot of macro changes uh, that the retail industry has gone through uh keen to hear what your thoughts are yeah so thank you so much uh, i think you know very relevant points have been you know already mentioned by niti and dhruv and um, here i would like to you know just mention that like retail industry was you know very very dynamic and fast paced industry before the pandemic and uh, this was one of the industries which was very badly impacted also so we saw a lot of changes uh, post pandemic uh, not only in terms of customer you know preferences customer mindset uh, the push of technology and uh, you know changes change in business models so all that has also impacted uh, you know the role of lnd because the business is also looking at lnd to help them adapt to the new normal okay so uh, lnd has become from nice to have to need to have you know it's very very important and because the higher expectations from lnd is also because of the business disruption that has happened the business has understood that you know we cannot un- we cannot do the way we were doing things earlier we have to learn and we have to be very very agile so uh, i think lnd has done a phenomenal job worked at a lightning speed both in uh, the first and the second wave we have done our best uh, you know with the budget cuts and uh, you know <laughs> but now i see things are improving because uh, you know the lnd has actually elevated its role in these two uh, years and we have actually shown the value of our training programs so what i see that few things which are Uh, have resulted as a result of this pandemic and which is going to continue is that there is going to be a shift towards uh, experiential learning uh, you know we it's it's going to become uh, you know use of gamified learning virtual and alternate reality all these things are going to become very very important i also see that the continuous learning which has already been touched by you know uh, dhruv and uh, niti that also is going to become very very important and this is going to be a struggle for lnd professionals to uh, get uh, and build a culture of learning in the organization because uh, you know that is a critical thing and if we don't do that it is going to become very very we might have so many content providers but it's going to be very very difficult if we don't have a good learning culture in the organization and the other things that i feel that you know uh, budget uh, you know few organizations might have been very generous with the budget and few organizations are still cutting what is important that uh, lnt is going to be under a great deal of scrutiny we have to be mindful about you know the money that is spent and focus on roi is going to become very very important so that we use the money in most effective and productive ways to promote learning so this these are the few things that i'd like to talk about awesome man we and i think you've touched a very uh, a delicate chord with lnd which is budgets uh, <laughs> and i'm sure everybody has a smile when it comes to that but an, an interesting topic that uh, i think you also mentioned in in one of our conversation was around skilling 
upskilling and right skilling mm-hmm. uh, while that's important for for the learners how important do you think is that for our trainers because what has happened in last two years is that there's been an adjustment from the business from the organization uh, but what we don't realize is that the people also imparting learning also a need to upskill and reskill what are your thoughts on that uh you know very very important in fact you know i feel that as lnd professionals the canvas has grown larger and there is need to take a much bigger mandate for us okay uh we have to help business leaders and employees across the organization to grow and adapt and this is what the pandemic has uh, you know shown us and if you see lnt like i just mentioned that lnt has done a phenomenal job uh, you know i was i i was just uh, you know talking with someone and we were seeing that how so many roles lnt has is has uh, uh, has taken up like uh, lnt professionals are becoming pulse survey experts they are becoming virtual learning specialists they are becoming learning experience providers so many things you just have to see uh, you know linkedin go to learning and you see a uh, lnd pro- professionals profiles you have all these words and it's not that you know they are just fancy words people are, are actually doing so much so i feel that the way uh, the lnd has to wear uh, um, you know several hats and you actually have to uh, develop newer competencies to uh, grow and develop yourself so things like you know uh, you had just mentioned that things like you know design thinking principles uh, technology uh, use of analytics all these things are some things that uh, lnd has to uh, develop skills if you are not uh, if you already don't have those skills you need to develop these skills to become a well grounded uh, lnd professional now yeah wisely said and i think sometimes what happens in all this shift uh we forget that lnd folks need to reskill themselves you write the kind of jobs that are available for lnd is completely changed uh so that paradigm shift is very important a lot of organizations are looking at various approaches of running lnd and that kind of takes me to uh sabha ratnam and i wanted to you know kind of uh, talk about a little bit about what your thoughts are uh, both on how the retail industry has changed and i know you had some very interesting examples last time when we spoke and how is it that you're dealing with those changes uh, within your organization uh, thank you prachi uh, uh, it's wonderful to be part of this panel uh, i heard neeti through and uh, manvi and uh, completely aligned to what they said i'm not going to repeat anything that they have spoken because uh, we also feel the same thing uh, and uh, if you look at uh, customers today i think uh, they tend to mo- know as much if not more uh, than the people uh, you know who are selling at our stores and uh, we are also noticing uh, mobile phones playing a vital role uh, in uh, customer engagement so consumers have their own ways of uh, researching and uh, they are also keen to optimize on every rupee that they spend you know on the business and that gives us an opportunity to really engage with them using uh, different tools and uh, that's where new capability is needed uh, if you ask me uh, an example could be that uh, a consumer who is not in front of you and is remotely getting handled uh, you know will only get to hear you right uh, and uh, when they are hearing you it's uh, that much more important to be more clear on your communication and uh, you also need to understand uh, the ways and means of touching the right chord right with the customer and uh, that's what is going to get you uh, either the customer getting converted or uh, you know they uh, putting up some excuse to buy later so it's very important that uh, the element of consultation is developed uh, for your people and uh, that's becoming more and more vital for us and uh, some customers you know have known us uh, but many of them are new and uh, in that space you know you really need to create uh, compelling content and uh, i completely agree with truth that uh, content uh, should be such that uh, it's easily understood and it is extremely well engaging it doesn't take away too much of your time and uh, you re- readily have you know the top 3 or 4 uh, points that you need to really talk about 
so if that is coming up you know then content is really justifying uh, uh, you know it's uh, core and uh, it's important that we think on those lines now it's no longer uh, going to be storytelling in a long way you know which is uh, uh, having several elements which i have to decipher i have to be very very clear i have to bring in the element of brevity in what i want to discuss and uh, you know you have to be mindful of just the two or three things you know because there are too many things which are coming in and manvi is absolutely right because when you speak to managers when you speak about the changes which have happened uh, post covid i think uh, the requirements have uh, you know been growing and uh, with so much of demand and everybody doing something or the other to these poor folks uh, we have to be mindful that uh, what they can grasp and how we give them right so that's the uh, change that we are seeing at this point in time uh, that's a very interesting, interesting. point and i'll i'll move on to my next question with the uh, with you uh and uh, you know i wanted to know uh who according to you are our learners and what is the new learner persona and what does learner experience mean to you i've heard of customer experience for a very long time and most retail industry i think spends insane amount of time uh yeah. but now <laughs> but now we're also looking at getting our learners a good experience uh so first who is our learner and what's the persona according to you especially when it comes to frontline and then hmm. how important is learner experience so if- yeah so uh, you know continuing on my point i think uh, learners have become more attuned to what they can learn fast okay uh, the long boring sessions are over uh, firstly to provide personalization the number of people uh, who should be part of your session should not exceed more than 20 in my mind sometimes it becomes 25 that too is uh, very large you can't look into everyone and uh, then you need to you know certainly build uh, in some pre work because uh, that has really given them uh, a platform to engage and participate and this also enhances collaboration in a lot of ways so when we look at learning we talk about personalization we talk about collaboration we also talking uh, talk about uh, making it more informal so a little bit of quizzing some exciting goodies you know they have become part of the norm now you know and uh, if these things are not there uh, when you uh, want to train or coach you know they feel that uh, it becomes like a one sided exercise uh, where somebody is throwing jargons at them and they are not able to follow uh, the same is true for all the digital content that is developed for learners as well uh, we will have to ensure that it is simple relatable easy to comprehend and uh, it too must have elements of peer contribution and uh, gaming like what manvi was talking about and uh, that truly translates into a leaderboard for them you know and uh, it adds to their motivation the learner is uh, today seeking more meaningful discussions so that it becomes purposeful for their development and uh, they are able to apply the learning onto their jobs we looked at focusing on functional competencies and this is something that gets missed because organizations want to create future leaders and uh, they focus on top talent but the fact is that everyone needs support in their area of work as well and uh, that could be understood by creating experts in the functions and getting them to train and coach people on their respective functions as well you know this is a big shift that we are able to sense and build for the company brilliant i think uh, using the current uh, functional leads to be coaches is is one of the most important thing in health and customer uh, uh, learner experience uh, of course you mentioned badges you ma- mentioned point leaderboards uh, extremely important part of gamification and helps us interact uh, manvi over to you wanted to understand who is a learner for you and what is that persona and how important is learner experience learner you know this pandemic has created a learning need across the organization so for me learner is you know across we have uh, like you know we work um, uh, i work with the retail uh, organization which has multi generational workforce so you know we have gen x gen y gen z everybody so you know everybody is a learner and there are few areas which the pandemic has definitely opened up where you know we need to focus on uh, so learner uh, experience if you ask me is very very important because it leads to better learning and retention so it is just not about content because most of the time we think that learner experience is all about content 
learner experience is just not about content it is how will you understand the learner's context and how the learning content can lead to better application of the learning so learning a learner experience is what drives engagement uh, collaboration and application one of the things that uh, i'd like to you know add on here is that if you see we have we have so many online learning uh, you know we, there's so many vendors and so many you know learning providers they have you know fabulous content but the problem for of all these uh, you know modules and online learning is that it makes learning a very solitary uh, you know uh, exercise and it is actually it becomes a it becomes boring and research has shown that best learning happens when we learn in cohorts or so that it is where that learner experience either you you know have some kind of a social learning platform or you know we have to and as lnd professionals there is going to be a challenge for us that how do you make this entire uh, you know journey the learning journey very very exciting and uh, better learning and better retention through all this very interesting manvi i think uh, we end up Uh, and and i'm glad you picked it up we end up looking at content as the only learning experience but you absolutely like collaboration and uh, you know a man is a social animal human is a social animal and then getting into cohorts that's exciting uh, but it takes me to the conversation that we were having earlier dhruv with you on the content uh, and and what is your thought around learner experience and how important is content in it and who is your learner and what is that persona so my learner uh, i guess uh, is the same aspirational ambitious young person uh, who and across the organization i see this young person who has this need to learn so there is a definite change in in the in the learner on the uh, intent to learn and uh, that i believe uh, has come in with this whole technology and digital content that has been made available people have realized secondly the importance of learning there is a big correlation between people who are learning faster and people who are growing faster in organizations and the learner has understood this point that you know i for to for me to grow faster i have to learn faster and that's why that there is a acceptance of spending some time on learning new things now coming to the content it is a challenge on us how to make that content more relevant for the person how to make it more specific to the person i will spend some time on the context of it because content is good but the experience come when the context of the content is also customized to the person the same content given in a in, in a one a format is not relevant to the same person in a b, b context and what why i'm saying is that the way people want to learn they want to learn specific things so the same thing that you want to teach them coming from a one direction is one content and coming from another direction is another content but the, the the beauty is the experience depends not on what you are teaching but how you are teaching and when you are teaching it and all these three things have to come together if and the same topic and i have seen this myself the same topic for example i take very simple topic on uh, cashiering uh, at my stores if i do the same content on say covering the process there is a different outcome and different intent around it and different experience i have to create to teach something to people on the on the process part of it and same thing if i have to teach the same person on a customer experience part of it at the cashiering pause then the whole content has to be customized the experience and the way i deliver that on the customer service bit has to be different and the same call cashier if i have to teach the person to increase the sale and increase the cross sell and the upselling the same content but i have to like again customize it and again position it and again the context has to be created this is a sales orientation so that i believe is the change that we are witnessing as mani is saying content context together coming with a specific intent to teach what we are teaching together uh, comes into an experience and if all goes right that's where we become successful now very interesting it's 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 so cool to see such different uh, and interesting point of views on the same topic and i completely agree i think if the content does not resonate with the learner they'll never pick it up what's in it for me is is something that needs to be answered and as we move along uh, you know when 
anybody designs content, that's the first thing they should be writing as an objective. What's in it for the learner? And like you said, if it's sales, it has to be relevant. Uh, it takes me to uh, what Neeti was saying earlier that uh, the content or now the learning is about the learner, when they want to learn and how they want to learn. And, you know, it's, it's more of a pull than a push. Uh, what is a good learner experience according to you, Neeti? Yeah, Prachi, um, I mean, we uh, have had such a great discussion until now. And I heard uh, we talked about budget and content and uh, um, uh, what the learner really looks like. I think from a learning experience point of view, um, and we spoke about Instagram, right? So the stories and Instagram, forget about the still pictures that we upload. It's now about a story that lasts only for 24 hours and then you move on to the next story, right? So of course, uh, taking all that uh, into account, I would say learner experience has to be very close to how they are living um, their own individual personal spaces, right? So um, in marketing, we uh, would uh, hear about or learn about or maybe practice something called precision marketing, right? So now when we are talking about creating a learning experience, it has to be very precise to the audience that we are really talking to, right? So for example, if I was to look at maybe a retail lead, right? Someone who's really leading the business uh, for the country, the business, uh, you know, so for that kind of a person, it's more about um, the, the learning or it's about how they interact with their peer group in the market and really get to know how the sales numbers are performing and uh, what other businesses are really doing to fix those numbers. But when it comes to, a retail associate, it is as about as simple as really creating a hero story. So for example, instead of telling them that this is service step number one, service number step two, three, four, five, from entry to exit of a consumer, probably I will create a service hero and ask the service hero to present their uh, uh, success story with the team. So as uh, again, you know, referencing back to the point when I said that it's about peer learning. So there is where they will know the benchmark. There is when they see the results coming in. There is when they see, oh, really, this works, that probably um, they would, uh, you know, start practicing it. Then how do I teach them maybe mathematics, retail mathematics? So instead of really, you know, putting a case study and asking them to decipher the conclusion, I would say, okay, this is a live scenario of a particular store. And now how do you think, what are those top three things that uh, the store manager and the team could do to really uh, enhance the sell throughs, right? So what I'm really trying to say, it's about blended learning, really looking at how they learn faster. And the most important thing is capturing that feedback at the end of the session, really being sure that you're including that voice of the consumer where, or the learner in this case, where they really say, okay, this worked well for me, this didn't work well for me. For example, I can never imagine having the three hours of a virtual session. So, and that too, without giving a 15 minutes of a break in between. So does my, is 90 minutes okay? Or is it 60 minutes? But uh, that has to come, as I said, from the learner, how they want to learn. I hope I answered your question. Yes, of course you did. Uh, I think everybody did and brought a very interesting and different perspective to it. I see there's an audience question, but before I move on to that, I do want, you know, all of you come from massive experience and you've also done a very good change management in the last two years and I'm sure earlier all as well in your life. Uh, we, we do realize that as we move up the ladder, we also have new leaders coming into L&D and especially in the retail world. Uh, and, you know, they are looking at, at looking at you guys to kind of tell them what is it uh, that they need to manage as the first thing when they become leaders uh, for the L&D world. So this is for the new leaders that come into the L&D industry in retail. Uh, how would you, what would be your advice uh, from your experience that what is it that they need to look at or what are the key challenges that they should address first uh, as soon as they become the uh, leaders and then we'll pick up the audience question it's great to see questions guys please keep putting them in uh we'll start with dhruv dhruv uh what are your thoughts on it what is your advice to the new l d leaders in the retail industry my advice is comes from my experience the kind of questions that i get asked on a daily basis or whenever i am putting up a proposition so uh my challenge is that how to be specific how to be measurable, 
and how to be impactful these are three questions that i ask myself every day as i go into any meeting talking about any lnd proposition and also in hr in general and uh, to the newcomers or the people who are starting new in lnd or in hr as a practitioner i would certainly insist even my younger self that try to learn business a lot more than we actually do i personally personally try harder to learn business but the more i have tried to learn it i have realized that the more effort i should be putting into it in fact i would even suggest that setting up one day in a week to just be the business person and you know go out and sit just sit inside the store or maybe just be on the field and talk to five customers so our relevance has is is the most important point to me and there was a, you know, there is a debate that you know since it's getting more complex and more complex the answer lies in getting more simple from an lnod perspective learner perspective or or the trainer perspective or a practitioner perspective in this complexity if we have to really put up simple exact solutions then we have to know the business in and out and then leverage on various experts who are there like digital experts content creation experts change experts uh, delivery experts to create the solution but we have to be lot more relevant because if we are not relevant the context of the business is getting so challenging that there is nothing called implied roi there has to be a direct roi of what we are doing in 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 our, in our in our roles and to be specific to be direct to be contributing to be really making an impact learn the business first spend time every week at least two or three days in a month with the business people just doing only business because the rate of change is so high that even if after three months you come back with a solutioning you are maybe off the target yeah and i i completely resonate with that i think making it measurable and business specific is the only way to go uh, for lnd i'll move on to the questions because i see there's a time check that's been given to me for 5 minutes uh, i'll i'll take on the first question that is how do you identify the current gap in needed skill and existing skills of frontline staff uh, that's an audience question anybody who'd like to answer that please from the panel so prachi i can take that up Sure. Um, so there are a lot of uh, data. I'm sure that uh, all um, uh, you know uh, there are many data points that we really get uh, within the organization. So something like a net promoter score, right? So what is the consumer feedback which is really coming in? Also something like a feedback from a line manager. If we were to really look at current skills and potential skills from a career point of view. So uh, if you have something like a uh like a matrix where you're really plugging your people in and you know at the capability level where you have to really bring them to be able to fill, fulfill your future uh human resource needs so from a consumer point of view nps or mystery shopping or whatever people are using from a people growth point of view line manager business and hr feedback so there are multiple data points that we could really use and really see and validate it against the behaviors that we really see in work and see what the current needs and the needed skills could be awesome thank you for that yeah. i'll go on to the next question there is a lot of uncertainty about future how does one accurate, accurately predict what skills will be needed uh, if if any of the panelists would like to pick up this question okay yeah manvi <clears throat> yeah so i think you know uh, yeah of course future is uncertain the crisis actually has created an environment where we can either see it as very terrifying or very thrilling because you know we are getting to learn new things or we it can be terrifying that we don't know what's going to happen but you know how we go from here completely depends on uh, what we do with what we have learned so it's very important that uh, you know you look at reflect uh, uh, so i think i can think about three things uh, reflect rethink and reengineer so three things if you have this kind of approach uh, uh, and be very agile and open to learning new things yeah and and i i i'll second that and i think one skill that any everybody needs for the future is to unlearn and relearn 
uh, not to get stuck in what we read. Uh, I think comes with a lot of experience and, and you know, uh, I, I also saw that shift and I said, okay, no, you need to unlearn and relearn. That is definitely a skill that will help anybody. Uh, I'll go on to the last question. Uh, can the technology help predict future skills? What tools can help in this regard? Uh, anybody would like to pick up that question? See, <clears throat> technology can certainly help us what skills to pick up, beginning from the point that technology itself is a skill for many people <laughs> across, you know. <laughs> and, you know, how to, first of all, learn technology. To leverage technology to learn skills comes second step. I certainly believe, especially for the leaders uh, and for us, uh, leveraging technology, learning technology, it's uh, really an area where, you know, we should not be so, so uh, hell-bent that I will learn only this part of technology or this skill, this language, this programming. But in general, as all of us are saying, learning and relearning has to be practiced. And if you have to master the skill of learning and unlearning, one thing that has to be done is to do and learn something every day or every week. So it's not relevant in my mind that, you know, what exactly I have to learn and get so you know, overbearing about it. The most important is look back in the last month and say, have I learned something new? Any course, any webinar, any session I did or interaction I did where I learned something and have I been able to use that learning? And I will tell you that we will never be able to exactly predict at this moment of time what all the skills we need. But the ability to learn faster and getting aligned and keep on getting aligned on a faster basis comes when we continue to learn on a continual basis. I, I kind of agree with what Dhruv said. And uh, sorry to butt in, but uh, just wanted to add a few points there. Uh, it's important... Uh, to look at, you know, in-person training, but uh, it looks largely impossible at this point in time, right? And uh, we are also looking at blended online learning. And uh, that's the way we expect uh, to deliver learning programs for uh, the next six months, at least uh, in my uh, mind. And if you really have to look at employees who are going to return back to work, uh, then I'm sure that we're not going to go back to the same old ways of training, right? Because uh, the new ways uh, have shown a lot of uh, effectiveness in the way it should be done and uh, how we could uh, leverage uh, that, you know, with technology in a much better manner. So uh, there are guiding principles that has sustained us. And uh, I would certainly talk about them as well, because uh, one is, uh, you know, what uh, we have been saying that content is king and you have to really uh, work on your content. So have a great content, uh, start working on that and that will never die, you know, no matter uh, uh, how much uh, future you get into, uh, you really uh, uh, want to involve yourself into the content that you're trying to create. Second is, uh, you know, how do you go about delivering that content? So we have already innovated a lot. I think a lot of work needs to be done on that front. We have to continuously think uh, how the learner is learning. And that was an interesting question from Prachi as well as to what your learner persona is. You have to dig deep into that aspect and continue to innovate on that front. Operational excellence is another thing that Dhruv mentioned. You know, you have to be partnering with your business. You have to understand how things are getting operated in your uh, space. So one has to involve uh, fully in the business and uh, also look at the trends that are visible to you in the business uh, uh, space. Because uh, the way things will change for business uh, will certainly impact the way you would uh, go about training, right? So you have to see what are the future changes that are going to come in and uh, how are you going to, you know, then tweak your training methods or uh, tweak your training deliveries accordingly. It's very important to look at, uh, you know, delivering a great learning experience uh, no matter when, you know, and uh, that should be the core focus for us. So if we can nail all the four, you know, irrespective of uh, whichever order they come in, uh, whether it is virtual or in person, you know, your learning will stick. So that is uh, the most important thing, uh, uh, more important than anything else. 
and then this is the age for upskilling reskilling and we are also talking about internal mobility we want to uh, grow our own timber right so uh, it's important that uh, we are more focused on developing those skills within the organization and uh, this will carry us to the next phase of growth as well in the new world of work keeping high value high performing employees uh, you know as paramount and uh, uh, it's moving them into positions you know which will deliver more value for you and uh, the organization so uh, <laughs> when we hire for those skills you know it becomes difficult if we get somebody from outside there might be budget constraints there might be uh, you know cultural uh, incompatibility incompa so compatibility not being there etc and uh, it's important that you get your internal mobility also going and uh, when you want to move your employees into one job to another you really need to upskill them uh, and work on that front as well right so the future is bright in my mind and there is a lot of work for all of us we just need to you know uh, uh, tweak the right levers and uh, push the right buttons so that uh, we are moving the right direction awesome awesome thank you so much i think you summarized that very beautifully uh, and thank you for this i do do have more questions but i think we'll probably connect separately and have a uh, different discussion thank you all of you it is lovely uh, speaking to each one of you and uh, I think that pretty much brings us to the end of the session. Uh, let's be connected offline. Thank you so much.